stumbled into my first pole dancing class back in 2003. And it wasn't until I was a couple months in that I found out what a strip club was or what pole dancing meant to most people. I was 26. How did that happen? Well, I was fresh out of having spent about a dozen years in a legit end of the world survivalist cult up in North Idaho. It wasn't a cult of Lego, but I think I was about as naive as a Lego when I, when I left there. Um, around that time, I was also dealing with the fact that I found out I had a tumor in my head. Non-cancerous, thank goodness, but on my pituitary, so it was sabotaging my metabolism. I had decided that I wanted to entertain myself so I would stay active, so I picked up a tap dancing class. That somehow snowballed into taking a pole dancing class. Um, I don't know how to describe for you exactly how naive I was at that point in my life, other than to say that at age 25, I could probably count on one hand the number of PG-13 movies I had ever seen. Enter pole dancing. <laughs> now, I feel like I need to take a minute to educate you on some of the differences between pole dancing in studios and pole dancing in clubs, because it is very different. I think the thing that surprises people the most about pole dancing classes is that the movement that we produce is actually really elegant. It has an intimacy to it that is surprising. If you think about it, pole dancing in clubs is about entertaining someone else. It's about performing for an audience. Whereas in studios, it's a bunch of people getting together, um, learning kind of this ancient art of feminine movement and looking to feel more confident and just kind of more awesome. That being said, there are several types of pole dancing classes out there. Since you likely aren't fresh out of a cult, I don't have to explain to you what authentic pole dance classes would be like. <laughs> Aerobic classes are all about that workout. They're less about actually learning to dance and more about working out. Acrobatic classes, oh my goodness, these people are amazing. True aerial artists. Check YouTube if you haven't seen that. But my favorite is what I like to call artistic pole dancing or sensual pole dance. Now, don't get me wrong, we get pretty gymnastic. We're still gonna climb, flip upside down, and spin and fly in crazy ways. But the difference is it's more about an internal journey and a little bit less about an external show. Now, if you've ever seen So You Think You Can Dance, you know what I mean when I say that dance can tell stories. Central pole dancing is a lot like that, except that we get to play on a pole while we do it. And it's accessible to the everyday woman. You don't have to have prior dance experience. If you can imagine an experience that is part workout, part girls night out, part moving meditation, and part cathartic therapy session, you can begin to understand what a good pole dancing class is like. It's a little different than people think going into it. You know how you have that song that every time it comes on, it places you right back in high school? That's just one example of how powerful music is in connecting us to our emotions. Tony Robbins was one of the first people to point out that movement and mood are very, very connected as well. So when you take a song that's really important to you on a personal level, and you connect it with this style of movement that's very personal and intimate, it's an interesting experience in that it really kind of connects right back to your heart. For me, there's nothing quite like being in a dimly lit studio with music playing louder than I can think and a song that relates to my moment. It can be happy, it can be sad, it can be sassy and sexy, or it can just be soft and pretty. There's really no style, there's really no emotion I can't dance out. Turns out when you leave a cult, you really have about zero street smarts. So my first five years out were probably actually tougher for me than the 12 years in. I remember a particularly dark time in my late 20s where I was going through some stuff and I literally danced to Madonna's song, Live to Tell, every week for months. Each five minute dance was a moving meditation in a room full of supportive women and as the words, a man can tell a thousand lies, I've, lived my, I've learned my lesson well, hope I live to tell, would enter the room, my pain would leave me through my movement and tears. Having had to develop an ability to stay externally composed, no matter what I was experiencing at a young age, left me with this weird inability to really connect to my emotions and feel like I could express them in a productive way. So for me, pole dancing is what bridged that gap. Um, it was important enough to me that actually seven years ago, I, I built a studio called Express Me where I wanted to create this experience for other women who were dealing with their own set of experiences in life. And my team and I have actually had the opportunity to see thousands of women go through this and have their own personal transformations. So a lot of times people really come to pole dancing classes looking to get a boost of confidence, and they do get that. But for someone like me who had a whole lifetime of craziness to process, pole dancing is the unlikely lifesaver that you never forget. Thank you.